Good afternoon. I'm Bob Davis. I'm an English professor from Wittenberg University in Springfield, Ohio. And I'm making this Zoom lecture from central Wisconsin, Mosinee, Wisconsin, about how to ace your first college essay. So what we want to work on, I want to have you think about the, the strategies, the process, the way you go about tackling an essay that's driven by a thesis. Most of the college writing you'll do is analytic writing, thesis-driven writing, an arguable topic. You'll hear that word a lot. Arguable means reasonable people could take different positions on a question or a problem. And that's what we prize most in academic critical thinking. We want to teach students to feel comfortable wrestling with problems that don't have obvious or commonsensical um, or, or, or un, uh, inarguable uh, answers. We want to encourage students to learn how to use data and information to ask hard questions, good questions, and take a position on that question and then support their claim or thesis or hypothesis with authoritative evidence. So that's the big money skill in college writing classes. You'll get a chance to do some creative writing in many classes and some autobiographical writing, but what I want to work on with you for the next four or five or six minutes is how to write a strong, arguable, thesis-driven analytic essay. It's kind of a mouthful. And my first piece of advice for you is to trust your voice. Trust the way you tend to write and think at the keyboard. It's good. Um, there can be some pressure, mainly internal pressure, when you start college to feel like you need to reshape yourself or reimagine yourself as a different kind of persona, that your voice is wrong or your writing is wrong. It's not true. It puts tremendous pressure on you, for one thing. It's almost impossible to rewire your brain at 18 or 19 or 20. And you don't need to. The way you think about things, the stories you like to tell, the, the moves that your mind makes, they're perfect. They're golden. Now, the, your profs will work with you on tone a little bit. There's appropriate tone, tone that's, that fits a college class, fits an academic class. But learning how to kind of access your best ideas in your own natural voice is great. That's the first thing I want to urge you to do. And the way to do that is to create what I teach my students to call discovery drafts or free writing drafts, drafts that have no, you're not trying to judge anything. You're not, sometimes it's even best to think of yourself as not exactly writing a paper. Um, you're, you're brainstorming or you're musing. I've had students who did really well in the early stages of a writing project to do their first draft, their discovery draft, as a letter to someone who enjoys the way they think, enjoys their voice, enjoys the way their mind moves. And then it's really easy once that flow starts and you get some momentum and you start to feel some confidence about the ideas on your, that are coming out of your keyboard, it's really easy to raise the tone of the letter a little bit to fit an academic audience. Take the contractions out. <laughs> take the slang out. This is, but it's good to start that way. Start, it's like wearing comfortable clothes. Put your comfortable shoes on when you start that discovery draft and kind of talk your way through it. Talk your way through your ideas. Enjoy the play. It's creativity and play. Enjoy the play of your mind as it works on the material. You can't turn that in. You wouldn't want to turn that in. It's really a chance for you to create flow. It's, that's a real thing. Flow in writing means there's a kind of self-confident looseness or freedom or experimentation. And you feel it when you're working at that. And creating that flow is part of that act of self-trust. Trust in the way your mind works, the things that occur to you, the ideas that you have, stories that occur to you. My second piece of advice is to make peace with multiple drafts. And that's, you sort of pick that up from what I'm saying about the discovery draft and about voice. Most short writing assignments, a five-page essay, require about nine or ten hours of good work. But you can't do it all at once. You want to spread that work out over several writing sessions, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, 80 minutes. And the discovery draft is the first of that process, that, the first draft that allows you to move toward an arguable thesis, a claim that you want to make, a point that you want to make. And then you can layer on top of that the second step of a writing process, which is diving back into your material. Lots of times what seems like 
writing problems are actually reading problems. When you feel totally stuck at the keyboard and there's no flow, there's no, sometimes it means you don't know your material well enough to write about it. And the, the, the antidote is real simple. Work back over, work back into the text, whatever the reading assignment was, whatever the essays were, work back into the material armed with an angle or a point of view. Your discovery draft should give you a sense of, this is sort of what I want to work on. Boom, back into the text, armed with that purpose, looking for authoritative evidence. And that's how you grow your ideas. You'll start to see the texts that you're working on push you to think more carefully and thoughtfully and with more nuance about that initial angle. And that's kind of the second step of a good writing process, a, a free writing draft, a trust draft, a discovery draft. And then you, you kind of, you have to see, belt yourself to the desk because the second part's hard. You really have to go do a deep dive into your material, really look carefully at key passages and let the key passages shape and extend your thinking, making peace with multiple drafts. At the very end of the writing process toward toward the ninth hour of a nine hour paper, that's when you're just working on grammar and proofreading and editing and not before. Lots of my students get stuck because they want it to be perfect right out of the box and they're anxious about red pencil corrections by English teachers. Don't think about that for a while. But then think about it hard at the end, really craft and polish your prose in that last writing session or two just before the papers do. I want to make one quick plug in the making peace with multiple drafts point about having a conversation with your prof in the process somewhere. And it can happen anywhere. Um, if it can happen at the very beginning when you get paper prompts, drop by her office or if it's an electron, if you're online with her, two or three or four minute conversation with a prof can be empowering, mainly because it can assure you that you're on a good path. And it can create a sense of humanness and dialogue in the writing project. So you're not just throwing your essays out into the void. You've had a conversation with a teacher who's interested in you and wants to help you. And it's like it flips switches. It's hard to do. If you're shy, it's really hard to do. It's hard to do in person. And I think it's even harder to do in an electronic format as a Zoom conversation. But if you build and you want to keep it short, you don't have to think of it. It's like it could be, it'd be great if you have an hour conversation, but usually it's short and kind of to the point, but it has a very powerful galvanizing effect on your mind and imagination. So it can happen in the beginning of your process when you're just formulating ideas. It can happen toward the end when you, you're kind of armed with a thesis and you want to check that thesis out, but build your prof into the writing process. And I think sometimes students are really shy about, uh, you don't want, they don't want to bother their professors or they feel like they're being a burden to their professors. It's just the opposite. We, this is what we live for. It's just exactly why we're doing this work. Um, and it's, it has a, it has a cool effect on you. It makes it real. It makes the, it more like a conversation than just writing a paper and passing a class. So the last thing is I urge my, the, word, the key word for me in this last step is trouble. Um, I urge my st students to get into trouble in their arguments and to feel like they're in some trouble, which that means you're working on tough material, good, deep, nuanced material. I, I can't count the number of times I've written in the margins of a student paper you're not getting into enough trouble. It's too, the paper's too safe. And what I mean by that is you're arguing for something that most of us already know. We're already convinced by that. So there's no real work to do in the essay. Um, I had, um, I, I really struggled in my first semester of my first year as an undergraduate and I had a great writing teacher um, named Elaine Scary. And Elaine would write in the margins Bob, you're flattening the drama of your own ideas, which kind of blew my mind. That first of all, the thought that there was drama in my ideas, and that then I was so nervous about like saying too much, going on too long, being too wordy. And what Elaine taught me is let yourself feel where the pop is, where the power is. And you know, when it comes right off your fingertips, you go, that's kicky. You know, that's kind of weird and cool. Linger there. Linger there. So you try to dry out, hit it with questions. What do I mean by that? Where do I see that? And let the, the, the trouble in your argument emerge around those strange moments. Those kind of, they're fun, they're gifts. I really think that you, they just come to you. 
And what happens then is that you'll find yourself contesting or challenging or complicating common sense wisdom. So what Elaine taught me was, I was so stuck in my writings. She, she said, just try a simple formula. Most people say X, but I want to argue Y, X, Y. So that there's tension between the position you're taking on whatever, the Great Gatsby, the Civil War, photosynthesis. There's tension between the argument that you're making and what most people already know. And the farther that X, the, the stretch between the X, Y, that's where the real power of your writing comes from. Then you've got work to do because people raise their eyebrows like, what? What, what are you talking about? You know, that, that's so different. That's so unusual. That's cool. That's, that's the ball game in academics. We love it when people do that. When I see people start a paragraph where they go, there's more to it than this, period. There's another way to look at this, period. There's another an angle. I go, whoa, good. We're doing some cool work now. So you can't do that with every paper, but you want to look, as you work, you want to look for ways in which the argument that you're making, the thesis that you're posing, has got some oomph to it, some stretch, some significance, some trouble. Make peace with that and enjoy. It's fun, super fun. If you grew up in families where there's a little bit of a kind of a debate vibe and people like talking things over and, you, you know, people are skeptical when you bring up, good. That'll help you trust that and work with that. Um, and you'll find that as you make peace with these the parts of the process, trust in yourself and multiple drafts and getting into trouble, the fun comes back. It's not just jumping through hoops and worrying about a five paragraph thesis, I mean, an essay and, you know, matching a protocol. That's not as important in college writing as it is in high school. We want to see students who are thinking in cool ways. And that's where the joy is. So, thanks for listening.